The Bayraktar TB2 unmanned combat aerial vehicle, shortly UCAV, has played a crucial role in many battles against the Russian and pro-Russian forces in the last five years. Many experts define it as one of the best in its class. But for many others, this UCAV is overrated. As the weapon detective, we are investigating the Bayraktar TB2 and whether it is a true hero. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The Bayraktar TB2 has successfully fought in all the recent noteworthy battles. Undoubtedly, it is one of the most intriguing weapon systems of our time. For some, this UCAV is a true marvel. The others claim that it is just an overrated asset by Turkish propaganda. Before healthily analyzing the far edges of these discourses, we should briefly look at the Bayraktar TB2's history and features. Turkey was one of the first countries to realize the importance of the unmanned aerial vehicle, shortly UAV, in asymmetric warfare. So, in the early 1990s, the Turkish armed forces intended to acquire these systems from abroad. But after the collapse of the USSR, NATO's easternmost ally had lost its importance in the eyes of its western allies. Because of the tension with Greece and the fierce war against the separatist terrorism, many countries, including the USA, began to impose covered or open embargoes against Turkey. The only reliable UAV supplier for Turkey was Israel. However, the second prime development, the economic crisis, disrupted the Turkish plans in the late 1990s. By the new millennium, the Turkish economy rapidly recovered. The relations between Ankara and the Western capitals improved. Thus, the Turkish defense industry was amazingly accelerated by the advantages of plenty of finance and more straightforward technology transfer. Turkey now had many local companies that could design and produce indigenous UAVs. One of them, Baikar Defense, gained its first commercial success with the Bayraktar Mini UAV in 2007. One year later, the company began to develop the Bayraktar TB1 for the tactical UAV program of Turkey. The prototype of Bayraktar TB1 made its first flight in 2009 and after trials it won the contest. But in 2012, the Turkish armed forces changed the acquisition plan toward the UCAV. So the Bayraktar TB1 remained a prototype. The Bayraktar TB2 was simply the enlarged and armed variant of its predecessor. It made its first flight on April 29, 2012. Two years later, the Bayraktar TB2 became operational in the Turkish armed forces. The UCAV completed its live fire trials in 2015. One year later, the Bayraktar TB2 began the service in the Turkish Armed Forces as UCAV. The Baykar's engineers have constantly worked with the military personnel in the field. This experience has paved the way for many further improvements to the UCAV. For example, during an operation, the Turkish Armed Forces directly requested the engineers at the operation center to give the Bayraktar TB2 an attack capability against moving targets. And Baikar quickly applied this ability to the UCAV after a short period. This structure has eliminated bureaucratic delays to actualize the improvements. The main components of the Bayraktar TB2 are mostly made of carbon fiber. The junction sections are precision CNC machined aluminum. The UCAV has a blended wing body design. The tail is inverse V-shape. The wing, tail boom and tails are detachable. There are solenoid valves to balance the fuel consumption automatically. Some British sources claim that the bomb racks of the Bayraktar TB2 are designed in the UK, but Baikar officially refuses the claim. Initially, some critical parts of the UCAV, such as the engine and electro-optics, came from abroad. After the embargo imposed because of the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh war, the Rotax 912 engine has been replaced with the locally produced TEI PD-170 engine. Also, the Westcam CMX-15D has given its place to the Aselsan's CATS forward-looking infrared system. According to the official statement of the Turkish Undersecretariat of Defense Industries in 2016, 93% of the main parts and subsystems are locally produced. Thanks to the modular design, other electro-optic sensors produced by different countries can easily be integrated into the UCAV by demand. 
The Bayraktar TB2 can also be fitted with the multi-mode active electronically scanned array radars and electronic warfare systems. The UCAV is controlled by the ground control station based on a NATO spec shelter unit. The Bayraktar TB2 executes taxiing, taking off, cruising and landing autonomously. But all these processes can also be directly controlled by the crew. A three-person crew in the ground control station consists of a pilot, payload operator and mission commander. The UCAV has a three-blade propeller at the rear. The early examples of the Bayraktar TB2 had a two-blade propeller. The range of the UCAV is limited by the coverage of the control station's ground-based antenna. To solve this problem, Baikar is working on the Bayraktar TB2S variant. This new model has a protrusion on the fuselage and an antenna on the nose for satellite communication. The UCAV holds the endurance and altitude records in Turkish aviation history. It flew for 27 hours and 3 minutes and climbed to 27,030 feet. So far, 19 countries have preferred the Bayraktar TB2. According to open sources, Azerbaijan, Ethiopia, Iraq, Kyrgyzstan, Libya, Morocco, Niger, Pakistan, Poland, Qatar, Turkey, Turkmenistan and Ukraine are some of the users of the UCAV. The Bayraktar TB2 has a length of 6.5 meters, a wingspan of 12 meters and a height of 2.2 meters. Its maximum takeoff weight is 700 kilograms. The UCAV has a 170 horsepower TEI PD170 turbocharged diesel engine. Its top cruising speed is about 220 km per hour, while its operational speed is 130 km per hour. The service ceiling of the Bayraktar TB2 is 7,620 meters, in other words, 25,000 feet. But the UCAV's operational altitude is about 5,490 meters, in other words, 18,000 feet. It has four hardpoints, which can carry the Elumtas air to surface anti tank missiles, the Jirit and Bozok guided rockets, the MAM-C, MAM-L and Kuzgun precision guided munitions. So far, the combat career of the Bayraktar TB2 has been very active and mediatic. Turkey has used the UCAV against terrorist groups intensely. On August 15, 2018, the UCAV eliminated Ismail Özden, the board member of the PKK in northwestern Iraq. By this operation, the Bayraktar TB2 proved its effectiveness against the moving targets for the first time in an actual combat mission. But the UCAV has made a name for itself, especially in Syria. Turkey has used it against the PYD, Syrian Arab Army, ISIS and occasionally against Russian forces. Naturally, both sides of the conflict have different accounts over the UCAV's performance. For example, Turkey claims that the Bayraktar TB2 managed to destroy over 70 Syrian armored vehicles in a week in Operation 2020, which is a great success. In contrast, Russian and Syrian sources assert that the UCAV's performance is not as good as the Turkish said. Some of them even call the Bayraktar TB2 an overrated propaganda asset. They claim that seven of them were shot down by the Syrian air defense. But there is only visual evidence for three Bayraktar TB2 being shot down. The propaganda war also continues over the Libyan civil war. The Russian side claims that 47 Bayraktar TB2 were destroyed. But the Western side asserts that the losses of the UCAV are less than 20. There is also a great debate over its success. According to the Russian, only 9 Pan CS1s have been destroyed. The Turkish claim that 15 of them and many other vehicles have fallen victims of the Bayraktar TB2. When Azerbaijan decided to reclaim Nagorno-Karabakh, the Bayraktar TB2 had the chance to prove itself in a full-scale war. According to the open sources on the internet, the Azerbaijani UCAVs destroyed over 135 artillery guns, 60 multiple launch rocket systems including Smirches, 15 armored fighting vehicles and 80 tanks. They even managed to eliminate more than 20 air defense systems including the Asas, Strela tanks and S-300s. In exchange, the Armenian forces could only shoot down 6 Bayraktar TB2s. Because of the undeniable Armenian defeat, the Russian propaganda machine has fallen into silence this time. The Ukrainian Bayraktar TV2s conducted the first reconnaissance flight over the Donbass region on April 9, 2021. Six months later, they performed the first combat mission against the Russian separatists and destroyed a D-30 howitzer. In the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Ukrainian sources shared the footage of the Bayraktar TV2s that managed to eliminate the Russian supply convoys 
fuel trains, military vehicles, tanks, and even book M2 air defense systems. In return, the Russian sources claim that two UCAVs were shot down. The Ethiopian Bayraktar TB2s have been used in the Tigray War, but there is no reliable information about their combat performance. The stories and claims about the Bayraktar TB2s combat performance drive to the wall. According to the Russians, Turkey, Ukraine and the internationally recognized Libyan government of national accord waste their money. But we know that these countries, which are experiencing financial crisis, war or both, do not have money to waste. If this UCAV failed as the Russians claim, they would simply stop spending money on it. The current Russo-Ukrainian war shows us that the Russian army's doctrines are outdated. Before the ground invasion, the Russian Air Force did not wipe out the Ukrainian Air Force's assets and facilities. The Russian intelligence has not been able to locate the base of the Bayraktar TB2s. The Russian airborne early warning and control aircraft and fighters cannot effectively control the Ukrainian airspace. The situation shows that there is no proper air defense umbrella over the Russian columns. According to Turkish sources, the Pan CS-1's radar can detect the Bayraktar TB2, but it experiences difficulties identifying them. So the Russian radars need hardware and software upgrades. The fact that Russia started working on the Pan CSM variant after the experiences in Syria supports this claim. Turkey's aggressive policies in recent years have made this country a troublemaker in the eyes of its allies. In contrast, according to Ankara, the Western world caused this by not paying attention to Turkey's interests. Since the purpose of this video is not to analyze this issue, we will not go into who is right. But this separation caused an anti-Turkish view in the West. So, many experts and analysts create some myths about the Bayraktar TB2. This situation reminds us of stories told about the U-boats during the Second World War. It's true that the German submarines became a pain in the neck for the Allies, but they had no potential to win the war alone. Many analysts claim that during wartime, the Brits purposely exaggerated the effectiveness of the U-boats to gain US support. Also, magnifying the German threats increased the public support for the war efforts. The story of the Turkish UCAV is very similar to the U-boats. Magnifying the success of the Bayraktar TB2 makes Turkey a more aggressive country in the eyes of Westerners. Some Western sources claim that the UCAV has artificial intelligence and executes the attacks autonomously. Even the USA does not have such a superior technology yet. At first glance, this may seem like exalting Turkey's technological level. But attacking a target without human control is actually a war crime. Also, many Western sources claim that the Turkish drone attacks have caused civil losses. Unfortunately, collateral damage is inevitable in a war. Of course, we are not trying to justify any human loss. However, even if all these claims are true, the civilian casualties caused by Turkey are far below what the US drones have caused in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya and Syria. Today, many NATO members nearby Russia have to improve their military capabilities. They need low-cost, urgently deliverable and highly efficient weapon systems. The cost of the Bayraktar TB2 is lower than the US, Israeli and Chinese rivals. This UCAV has proved itself in many significant combats, especially against the Russians. Many NATO countries nearby Russia have to improve their air forces urgently. They need real combat aircraft, which are much more capable than the Bayraktar TB2. But could they spare a large amount of money to acquire a big number of F-35, Rafale or Eurofighter Typhoon? Besides, do these countries have time to wait for them? The quickly deliverable and cost-effective Bayraktar TB2 is the soundest option until the new high-capable fighters arrive. After they come, this UCAV will still continue to offer an efficient supplement to their combat capability. According to our analysis, the success story of the Bayraktar TB2 has just begun in the international market. The combat achievements of this UCAV necessitate a worldwide revision of military doctrines. It is one of the most intriguing weapon systems of our time. Undoubtedly, the Bayraktar TB2 is one of the most brilliant children of the recently rising Turkish defense industry. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.